Hi everyone, it's the Treefer here and welcome to a new episode of Reef Keeping 101. Today's video will be about tanks and how to take care of them, how to feed them, uh, how to see and indicate their regular behavior, all these kind of, uh, kind of things. Of course, all based on my own tank where I have a couple of tanks uh, I think there are four in my tank and you can see at least two of them right now but we'll get into each one of them separately along the lines of this video. So first of all um, tanks are a very common fish to find in reef tanks. Uh, they are um, There are plenty of them in the ocean. Uh, some of them can even be captive bred nowadays I've seen blue hippo tanks being captive bred, which is great news for the hobby, since otherwise uh, all of the tanks that will be caught from the ocean will end up in tanks, and reef tanks will of course shorten the lifespan, the average lifespan of these beautiful fish, because it's more likely that a tank crash will occur than that something bad will happen in the ocean that will cause a lot of tanks to die. So in general, I'm very happy to see that the uh, yeah well these things are evolving and uh, more and more tanks are also being uh, captive bred nowadays, which is uh, which is great. Uh, there's two very common tanks that you will find in a lot of reef tanks, which is the yellow uh, sailfin tank, which I don't have, uh, and the blue hippo tank, uh, which is of course uh, very popular based on the movies of Finding Nemo and Finding Dory. Um, yeah, these fish have become immensely popular over the last uh, 20 years, I think, already. Finding Nemo has been, uh, I feel, quite kind of old, uh, but I think it has been around for about 18 years, 16 years, something like that. So these fish have uh, caught the attention of the, the general public. I've already made a uh, video about keeping tanks before in my old tank which was more kind of a warning video on uh, well, some of the characteristics of this fish and why you should definitely have a big tank. This is more of an informative video. Uh, forgive me if I'll still be making a reference to uh, that you shouldn't keep tanks in a very small tank, but in general, that's not what this video is about. Um, well, the first thing that I want to show you is how to feed these fish or what they like, of course, uh, it's easy to just feed them meaty foods, which uh, are generally accepted by most of the fish in a reef tank. For example, uh, brine shrimp, mices or krill. Uh, but these tanks all uh, also need uh, green food, uh, usually that's algae. Um, and the things we feed them are of course based on algae. Um, you can feed them large sheets of uh, algae which are also made for human consumption uh, but I usually to keep to uh, to feeding uh, fish food uh, now there's you, if you've seen my videos before you know there's a specific brand that I'm really uh, digging because a lot of my fish accept the food uh, which is food by easy reefs and it's called mustic um, I've prepared some of it for uh, for now there's actually two types of mustic uh, on the market these days uh, and that's the powdery substance, which you can see here, which I have been uh, feeding for uh, for a lot of years. So you buy it in bags of powder, you mix it with water. I use a syringe to mix it, and then it turns into a nice ball of, um, of, of food. But nowadays there's also the uh, pre prepared, pre prepared mustic. These are actually five of these small pellets stuffed together. Uh, you don't need to mix it with water, it's pre mixed. Uh, the structure is slightly different i'll show you in a minute and then there's the dki pellets which uh, um, well which are also a, uh, a, a food based i think on the same product it's a lot smaller and a bit drier uh, i'll try to feed a couple of pellets so you can see they kind of sink pretty well and uh, you can see that the fish are uh, generally uh, going after them and really uh, hunting for them the smell is also very nice on these pellets, so that's what I uh, what I quite enjoy. But let's not dwell any longer on these foods. Let's just feed them. So this on the left, you will see the ball of mustic that I mixed myself just now. And on the right, the pre-mixed product. 
Uh, the structure is slightly different, so uh, um, the ones that I'm mixing myself is a, a bit more uh, easily, uh, bre it breaks apart more easily, and the one on the right is the pre-mixed one, it's a little bit more tough, uh, but it will also stay on the glass for a little longer. So the reason I'm feeding right now is that this gives us a nice opportunity to uh, observe these fish and to tell you something about them. So that's the intention of the feeding. Let me just clean my hands here. As you can see, actually all the tangs are, uh, are eating at the moment. Um, there's the blue hippo tang, which is right there, commonly referred to as Dory. Then there's the convict tang, which is right here, which looks like a bit of like a convict in a striped suit. I assume that's why they call it a convict tang. Then there's the uh, one of the sail fins. Um, this is actually a Desjardini sail fin tang. But there's also uh, the uh, Feliferum, which is uh, slightly different, but looks uh, kind of the same. And of course, these are called sail fin tanks because they have very large uh, fins that they uh, stretch out. Uh, you can see it right now. And even especially, especially when they're scared or when they are frightened by something, they will uh, darken up and uh, extend these, uh, these fins all the way up to intimidate their uh, opponents, you might say. And then there's the fourth tang, which is a uh, Tomini tang, and that's one the one I've had for the longest. So this tang, the smallest one, is actually the one that I've uh, kept for, uh, I think, five, maybe even six years now, but I, I think more like five. Uh, it's been a, a general uh, fish in my tank for the, uh, for the past years. Um, you don't see it a lot, it's not very big, it's not very prominently um, in your in in sight all day, but it's definitely one of the nicer uh, fish to uh, to keep. It's uh, so let's just start off with that one. It's fairly small, which is also makes it very suitable for uh, for smaller tanks. Uh, I've kept this one in the 350 liter tank uh, initially, uh, which was uh, large enough to uh, to keep this uh, this fish. It was uh, uh, the Tomini tanks like I said, are not very um, visible, so they are somewhat more in between the reef, uh, only coming out when you feed them, but they are there, they're just a bit gray with orange, and you, uh, when you zoom in on them, they are really beautiful fish, but from a, from a distance they seem kind of bland, uh, but they're definitely very nice tanks to, uh, to keep, especially if it's a somewhat smaller tank, uh, you can consider this one. I think it's one of the smallest, uh, the smallest tanks that you can uh, can find. Then on to uh, one of the biggest you can find is this uh, blue hippo tank. You, as you can also see on this video, she's uh, rather fat, uh, but that's perfectly fine. I mean, uh, I like to keep this one healthy. These are very prone to uh, getting uh, white spots called ick, uh, which can be prevented in my opinion, by using a, a UVC light. But these fish are very sensitive and very easily catch the egg uh, when there's something wrong in your tank. Either it's stress or something with the water. And uh, here's a little hidey hole that it always resides in. I'll see if I can lighten it up a bit so you can see her. Or if you look closely, you can see her lying flat horizontally in between these two rocks. So this is actually very common behavior for these kind of things. At first I thought it was silly, uh, but uh, yeah, here it goes again. Uh, it's common behavior for them to, uh, to hide in between uh, reef structures, which is uh, very nice uh, to see. And also, uh, yeah, typical behavior for these fish. Um, and uh, yeah, like said before, these fish are actually the ones that need the most swimming space of almost all tanks. There are tanks that get even bigger, um, I don't have those in my tank uh, because they can get up to 20, 30 centimeters. Um, like for example, a Naso tank, uh, we call them cow heads. I'm not sure if that's the, uh, the English name as well, uh, but I don't keep those. Uh, this is the biggest one that I have. I bought it as a, a stamp sized hippo tank, blue hippo tank, when it could still fit in between for example, the branches of this Stylophora, that small, 
and eventually they grow so big they need to hide in between rocks because of their uh, bulky body. So then the convict tank, uh, which is the, uh, the most recent addition to this tank, um, these are known to be, uh, they can be quite aggressive towards other fish, towards other tanks. Luckily this one isn't. It came from a, uh, from a, from a tank from a, uh, a person that I met online. So it's, it's not a retail fish. It's one that had already been in a reef tank for a couple of years. I think that definitely helped. Uh, because of course then you can already see how this fish is behaving uh, so they, they can be quite aggressive they're also very busy fish they are very prominently uh, uh, visible in your tank as you can see uh, it's, uh, it's definitely around and deciding what happens also very active very good one if you have a lot of algae problems since this one is one of the most active eaters that I've seen uh, in my uh, reefing career um, on top of that, I think they are really beautiful fish. They are uh, white, but some kind of pearlescent white, which makes them stand out. And uh, yeah, I, I can really appreciate this fish, especially since I paid only 20 euros for it. Actually, he wanted to give it to me for free uh, when I got the, uh, the parrot fish. And I said, no, nah, I, I won't take a free fish. Uh, I'll definitely pay you something for it since, uh, yeah, it's a, uh, it's a living creature and uh, that, that feels uh, feels right. <laughs> so then I'm moving on to the last one, the sailfin. Um, this is a Desjardini that, um, I think these are very beautiful fish. They are very, uh, um, um, yeah, their, their coloration is definitely very beautiful in the way they are, uh, uh, well, if you might say designed by mother nature. Um, yeah, these are very beautiful. The, the the yellow stripes inside the dark blue stripes, uh, yeah, mixing up with the with the white stripes. I think they are uh, a work of art. Uh, same for them. They are very active eaters. They like uh, eating uh, eating algae. Um, not as much as the convict tank, but definitely uh, second. So always uh, hanging around together as well with the uh, with the convict tank. A lot of the times, since they are, uh, well, they can appreciate each other, luckily. As you can see right here, they're not fighting, uh, which is great. Um, and yeah, and overall, also a very beautiful, uh, a beautiful fish that I've, uh, yeah, I think this is my second one. I've had one before, but that was a Veli Ferum. So this is a Desjardini. Um, yeah, overall, beautiful fish to watch, to see their behavior, to see them going around the reef and uh, just doing its, its thing and interacting with the, uh, the other creatures inside the tank. So I'm uh, very happy with this one, uh, this one as well. So I think it's time to wrap it up since we're already at 30 minutes. Um, in general, tanks uh, can make your tank look really beautiful uh, since they uh, really stand out. They are very active fish. So apart from the Tomini tank on the bottom right, um, they are uh, very uh, highly visible fish, beautifully colored. There's tons of different dollar colors out there that you can uh, can buy. Uh, a last word of warning, please do uh, take into account the size of your tank. Don't put too many tanks in a small tank. Um, and uh, please always uh, consider the welfare uh, of these uh, beautiful animals when you uh, want to buy one. So. I hope you enjoyed this video. I hope you enjoyed uh, the tanks that I showed you. Uh, I hope it inspired you to, uh, to think about having one for yourself, maybe. Um, and uh, yeah, I'll, uh, I'll see you in the next video. So for now, uh, have a great uh, rest of the weekend and stay safe out there. That's the most important part these days. And uh, I'll uh, see you in the next one. So for now, bye bye.